forests play a critical role in climate change. Healthy forests absorb up to a third of all greenhouse gases, and deforestation causes about a fifth of all emissions, equal to the world's cars, trucks, planes and ships combined. As part of international efforts to slow the pace of global warming, nations are negotiating a mechanism that could see developed countries pay poorer ones to protect, restore and sustainably manage their forests. The scheme is known as Red Plus, which stands for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. One of the technical challenges to implementing RED is determining what your impact is. How much have you reduced your, your deforestation emissions? In order to do that, you have to be able to quantify carbon in your ecosystems. You have to be able to quantify the transfer of carbon and other greenhouse gases from your ecosystems to the atmosphere. To make it simplistic, we could compare this peat carbon stock to a bank account and uh, calculate how much money is uh, saved or lost uh, during the year by making the balance of the transfers in and out of uh, the account. Scientists from the Centre for International Forestry Research are conducting studies in Asia, Africa and Latin America on measuring and monitoring deforestation emission levels and effectiveness of Red Plus schemes. Particular types of forests, like peat swamp forests and mangroves, have become critical in certain countries' efforts to reduce their emissions. So, so it's technically complicated to, to determine how much area has been deforested, but also, more importantly, how much carbon from the area that's been deforested ends up in the atmosphere. And that's where our, our work in the peatlands in particular is very important right now. Peatlands are some of the areas within Southeast Asia that are changing the most rapidly and we know the least about the carbon density. In Indonesia, most of our research focuses on peatlands. In their natural state, these ecosystems are wat waterlogged. So you don't have, um, you have a very low decomposi decomposition rate of the organic matter. So it accumulates and, 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 and that's how the, the, the peat builds over uh, millennia and once you drain, uh, you reverse the situation and the, the carbon that has been accumulated is, uh, start, starts decomposing and uh, emitted as CO2 or uh, methane. And every year that it's drained, an additional 8, 10, 12 tons of carbon per hectare goes from the peat to the atmosphere. So this is, this is the peat soil, it's um, highly organic. Um, like really little minerals in it. Consider peat soil when it has a carbon content above, content above um, 60%. This is actually carbon and this is, this is um, where most of the carbon is stored in, in these peat swamp ecosystems. So when peat swamp forests are converted, we estimate that about 60 to 80% of the emissions come from the peat. Therefore, we have uh, oriented our research in providing details on the, and accurate data on these emissions from the peat. So the peat is pretty deep here. Um, I think it's five meters. So as you go into the forest, the peat starts to dome, forms a natural dome here. So here we've got, we've got quite a lot of peat. It's good deep peat here. C4 researchers in the field are using sophisticated measurement techniques in virgin ecosystems as well as in converted areas of forests like oil palm plantations. Here the gas fluxes or gases that actually are emitted from this are, are relatively low. What we want to know is what happens if we drain this peat, take it out of its natural context. In um, the older palm oil uh, plantation, we're heading to the C4 plot. Large scale, this palm, this palm oil plantation is, is vast. Um, the area of peat that it's on is vast. Now, if this process scaled up is happening um, across the tropics, you know, on a global scale, this is actually going to have a really big impact on global warming. C4's research in mangrove forests 
is also shedding light on the importance of these coastal forest ecosystems. So mangroves are an interesting case because there's such a rapid rate of deforestation, particularly here in Southeast Asia. We figure we're losing, um, we, we've already lost probably about 60 or 70 percent of, of the mangroves and we're losing them at, at 3 to 4 percent of the remaining mangroves per year. These mangroves have very, very deep sediments that have buried carbon for a long time. And once you remove the vegetation, those sediments begin to erode. And that, that, that uh, carbon gets resuspended in the water column in, in the, the, the coastal zones and can oxidize and then be, be transferred to the atmosphere. Results show that deforestation in mangroves generates as much as 10% of all emissions from deforestation globally. So that, you know, much, much larger stores of carbon um, than we have in, say, tropical forest in, in the uplands or, or, you know, what we would normally think of as a tropical rainforest. We have uh, six, eight, ten times as much carbon in these mangroves as we have in these types of forests. So there's an awful lot uh, that, that gets mobilized and then transferred back to the atmosphere. By gathering accurate data from the changes in greenhouse gas emissions between these natural environments and when converted for other uses, information can be provided to governments and decision makers to assist in the way these forests are managed and for schemes to reduce carbon emissions like Red Plus. Um, these are like the reference images, so the first images. So I will come back in, uh, in two months, take the next set of images, then two months afterwards, two months afterwards. This research is shedding light on other attempts to tackle climate change, like the production of biofuels. If the products used in biofuels, like palm oil, come from plantations that were once forests, this so-called green activity can have long-lasting negative impacts for the climate. So, so the idea behind carbon debt is that once you deforest an area, you've, you've, you've created large emissions. Now if you're going to do activities on that area and try and, and claim emissions reductions, you actually have to first pay off that, that debt, the, the first set of emissions that, that came about from clearing the forest, from converting those, those lands um, to this, this new land use. What you've got around is, if you look to the horizon, you've got this level area of trees, literally all over, and that's the palm oil plantation. And what was here before? Rainforest. It was. It was all. Um, it was all virgin rainforest before. Yeah. So it's all been taken away for this. In the case of, of peatlands or mangroves, the amount of carbon that's released by any other activity that, that, that you put on that land to try and reduce emissions, it would take you at least 100 to, to 200, 250 years to repay that carbon debt. So for example, in, in Sumatra there's an awful lot of conversion of peatlands to produce oil palm. And oil palm, uh, the, the oil from, from palm can be used as biodiesel. And this biodiesel is being sold as, as a biofuel, it's green, it can help reduce fossil fuel emissions. But the, the, the case of peatlands in particular, you have a, a very large biomass that, that you remove, that, but then you go on and you emit you know, 8 to 10 tons of carbon per hectare every year that you're producing oil palm on there from the peat decomposition. You have to, to then balance that against what, what's the, the fossil fuel offset. If you don't balance it, you could have a negative, you are having a negative impact on the atmosphere while you're telling yourself that you're actually having a positive uh, impact on the atmosphere by not burning fossil fuels. And, and the atmosphere doesn't really care where the carbon comes from. If it comes from fossil fuels or if it comes from peat, it's still carbon in the atmosphere and you still get the global warming. <laughs>